Listen to the wind. You can hear the world breathing if you just listen. These breezes whisper melodies of distant lands transcribed through time. They are like wind chimes, swirling energy carrying seeds of wisdom. You can hear them as they blow through leaves of ancient trees. These breezes breathing and exhaling, telling the stories of this world for an eternity. Listen to the sea. It is the lifeblood of this planet, pumping and pulsing through every crevice, connecting the nations of this world through its embrace, tracing patterns in the sands of our birthlands, crashing on shores, expanding past the horizon, reaching deep into the depths of our imaginations. Listen to the land. It is the Earth's belly, rumbling and turning, its tectonic plate shift. We sift through its soils, but sticks as stones break into fragments, giving birth to life, giving birth to us. We are grateful. For every gift that Mother Earth gives, we live. Because the life of this land is perpetuated in righteousness, we are blessed. To see her beauty, taste her elegance, smell her power, touch her essence. This world becomes a miracle when you take time to just listen. How you guys doing, Bert? Hawaii? You good? Cool. So that's what it's been about for me. Um, it's been about listening. Uh, my first passion was actually clean energy and global climate change. That was roughly two decades ago. And ever since two decades ago, I've been listening to the conversations that we've been having about energy and global climate change. Um, and what I've noticed is that the language has shifted. You know, in the 90s uh, and early 2000s, it was all about, you know, they should handle this this might happen in the future sometime. And that's shifted to these days where it's become more about, I'm hearing a lot more of we are doing and we will, we must. There's a lot of we's in the language now and there's a lot of imperatives and there's a lot of uh, empowerment in the fact that we can do things about global climate change and clean energy and we are doing it and that's what's giving me so much hope because I've seen that transition from two decades ago to where we're at now and if you go on the streets everybody has an opinion on global climate change might not be the same opinion that you share but the point is that it's in the conversation now and that's what uh, allows me to feel like it's happening you know this is happening I know this is just a small um, sort of anecdote, but a couple of years ago, a, a number of years ago, I started planting a, a, a bunch of fruit trees in my garden. Um, mango, avocado, breadfruit, uh, lemon, lime, banana. And it was that small amount of labor that I was hoping in a number of years I would be able to harvest those fruits. And here I am today, 2017, I am harvesting those fruits. And what I'm hoping that is that through these conversations that we're having, through these discussions, that we'll be able to harvest those fruits from this labor down in the future when we start to see this world changing rapidly. Um, hopefully it doesn't change too rapidly because of the work that we do now. So I offer you this poem. We've been growing a garden around our place. We've been, growing, we've been growing a garden around our place. We don't have much space, but we've been working the soil beneath our feet, watching the green sprout over the concrete, watching the vines rewrite the graffiti on the walls. And we know that this garden is a simple symbol, that there is so much more to be done in this world, and sometimes it gets overwhelming, but we're taking responsibility for what we can control. And so, we're starting by planting seeds and caretaking, make, making the ecosystem thrive, watching the earth come alive, reflecting on the way we're living our daily lives. See, we've been growing a garden over time, so when we step outside, we can visualize what green energy looks like to remind ourselves that we are no different from the trees, that all the energy we need can come from the sun, the wind, the sea, and the infinite warmth of geothermal heat. And we know that another world is possible, that no matter how hopeless any one of us feels, this movement is real, that our convictions lead to innovations, lead to conservation, that technology must serve ecology. And so this garden is how we redefine the boundary lines between us and the global community. We have come to learn that there's no separation, that every nation on this blue planet is symbiotically fused, that everything we do affects some part of you, so we've been inspired to limit our impact, leave our surroundings better off than when we arrive, we have vowed to reverse the destructive tide before we die. 
See, we've been growing a garden for our children, leaving a better world for them to live in, teaching them to caretake what they've been given, show them to take a stand for sustainability, how to find the balance between progress and preservation, guide the way to a self-reliant revolution. You see, this garden is for our children. This garden is our pledge to them. <laughs> right on, thank you. <laughs> And so for me, that's what it's about, right? It's about our future generations. It's about our children. We always hear this talk about how, like, you know, we got to save the world. So we got to save the planet. And in my perspective, I mean, the planet is going to do its thing, you know? She can shake us off any time when we're misbehaving. So the deal is that how do we preserve ourselves, our um, existence on this planet? Um, so I wanted to offer you a little, a little, bit, a little perspective with this next piece. Um, recently, I finished this sort of theatrical production. It's a full-length theater thing that goes from the Big Bang all the way till now. So it traces our evolution from what happened to the Big Bang, the, the, all the uh, elements being created uh, in the stars, um, our solar system, the evolution of life from single-celled organism to human, and the migration of humans throughout the world. And then it ends with the last piece that talks about uh, global climate change and what we need to do in order to fix those problems. Um, we don't have enough time to do that whole thing, but what I wanted to do is give you a little snippet from this piece. It's called The Story of Everything, um, and it goes like this. Today, I want you to think about your life. I want you to think about what you stand for and realize that all the suffering you've ever experienced means nothing in the long term. For every year you live, the universe will be around for trillions. And for every friend you've made, there are billions yet to be born that you will never meet. In the grand scheme of things, we are nobody. And yet at the same time, we are everything. We are X and Y chromosomes. We are G, C, A, and T genomes. We are complex carbohydrates, simple proteins, soft tissue, hardwired neurons. We are strong bonds linked in nervous systems. And while this Earth's surface is covered with 65% salt water, we are walking bags made of 65% salt water, merely mimicking the environment that we evolved from. And when we are done, this flesh we call our own returns home to the sea when we dissipate, evaporate into water vapor, and these bones, these bones will be broken down by the roots of the tallest trees, while this Earth hurling through space will freeze and boil as it has for eons as it orbits the sun, which in five billion years will transform into a red giant and scorch all life as we know it. Its last blast before it fizzles into a whimper remembered by nobody. Or maybe charted by aliens as they peer through telescopes, logging our sun as a piece of data that came and went. And these aliens, whoever they may or may not be, I want them to think about their lives. I want you to think about your life as you study me through your primitive telescopes, and I want everybody, the aliens, you and me, to realize that, that even when our hearts break, or when work gets rough, or when rents do, or when someone somewhere says something stupid about you, even in the face of homicide, genocide, and suicide, in the face of racism, sexism, classism, and insert really bad word here, ism. No matter how hard life may get for you or for other people, zoom out. Zoom out and realize that all the evil in this world is transient. Heck, all the good in this world is transient. You, me, all of us are transient. You will not be you in the grand scheme of things, which makes all your suffering trivial, which makes your ecstasy the only thing worth remembering as part of the universe expressing itself in one giant celebration known as the Big Bang. We are its aftermath sigh. It's alibi for not having a reason. You are the universe learning about itself. You are the universe asking itself why it's here. You will soon be the universe not learning or asking anything. You were everything and nothing at the same time, and no matter how hard it is to admit, no matter how afraid we get and how much we want to deny the truth, well, the truth is, truth is we're gonna die. 
<laughs> Maybe not tonight, tomorrow, next year, but sooner or later, we're all going to die. But the truth is hard to swallow. And so we do everything we can to avoid the big picture because the big picture is paralyzing. And so we focus our eyes on the day-to-day -day dramas of our lives. But not today. Today, I want you to think about your life right here. Not here, the Verge Hawaii Conference in Honolulu, but here, this world, planet Earth, here, this galaxy, this universe. We are not cavemen anymore. There are no saber tooth tigers lurking in the shadows, yet most of us cling to our fears like the animals we evolved from. What are we so afraid of? We've been etching the same patterns and same, in the same predictable places for years. Why did we live the way that they tell us to win? Who the heck are they anyway? It's about time we start doing what's in our hearts because that's all we really got. I want you to think about all, things, all the things you wish you could do with tonight. I want you to do one of them and tomorrow, another. Our lives are temporary art pieces. We are works in progress, so I say paint your butt off. Use fluorescent yellows and reds in the places where there aren't any color. Dance for the moment, scope your life out of soil, and make the universe smile. Be the expressive process that is humanity. Today, I want you to think about your life, and tomorrow, I want you to live it. Thank you guys so much. Enjoy yourselves today.